Hello everyone, I'm of course John Doe, right here in Tokyo, Japan, on a rather cold night at the time of this recording, and we're going to do another edition of the da -da -da, Ghost Hunters Report. Now, all of you are pretty aware by now of this, um, of the hostage situation that happened involving Japanese nationals. Now, at this point, both men have been assassinated. One of them happened to be a prominent journalist here in Japan. He was actually trying to do a lot of good. He was a pretty good investigative journalist. Uncovered a lot of dirty crap in Japan over his time as a journalist. But he's dead. The other guy was this military adventurous fool who went over there thinking he's going to be some type of badass. That didn't work out very good for him, though, did it? Now, here in Japan, the conversation is why ISIS is so evil and so bad. It's pretty clear why. They're a bunch of, you know, fundamentalist, religious, extremist assholes who just, you know, really are bad and do nothing good, positive for the Middle East. That's not really, you know, the heart of the matter here. The heart of the matter is what created this hostage situation involving Japanese nationals in the first place. Well, the one thing no one wants to, no one seems to want to talk about or point out is the fact that our grand fascist leader, neoliberal blockhead, Shinzo Abe, is the one who created this shit in the first place and has now put everyone on this island at risk. All do you know him to want to be just like Daddy America and fight terrorism when really... ISIS in the entire situation in the Middle East has nothing to do with anyone living on this island here in Japan. We're not involved in this. We're not connected to this whatsoever. We have no material benefit, you know, the working people in Japan, to going over there, throwing money around, trying to make friends and saying we're fighting terrorism. Nothing to do with us at all. You know, but Shinzo Abe, his bourgeois fuck friends, and the capitalist clash, you know, here in Japan, they do have something to benefit from getting sticking Japan's nose in exactly where it doesn't belong, you know, and doing what Daddy America says. There's two points here. As we know, the capitalist class controls the politicians and the government. So Abe will look to function in their interest. How does he do that? Well, Abe has this policy of wanting to remilitarize Japan. He keeps pushing for it. He's already said that you know he has reinterpreted the Constitution. He just has to codify it, which is a matter of time. So this falls in line with that. How can you justify? You militarize in Japan when Japan has no material threat. Well, you go out there and you find a material threat, which is exactly what he's done. You know, if you get Japan involved in any way, shape, or form with the situation in the Middle East, you're going to have trouble. That's exactly what he's done. He stirred up some shit. He went over there and, like I said, throwing some damn money around, non-combat aid, which whatever the hell that means, I have no idea. It can mean a plethora of things. You know, then Japanese citizens get taken hostage. Abe, being a total fucking idiot at foreign policy, can't deal with it, you know, because he doesn't know how. Ends up both of them getting slaughtered. And now he can sit back and justify his remilitarization plan. Saying, you know, we need a big military now. We need a big, strong, aggressive army because, you know, the terrorists are coming. We've heard that before, haven't we, some, from some other leaders from other country, <coughs> America, <laughs> you know. Now, how does that relate to the capitalist class in Japan? How are they benefiting? Well, late last year, Abe uh, released a restriction, a long-standing post-World War II restriction that said weapons manufacturers in Japan cannot sell any weapons overseas. They can only produce for domestic, for the military, for the, the special defense forces, a very unique type of army that we currently have in Japan. Who re he released those restrictions. So now these they can sell weapons to anybody they want. 
So why is everybody really going over there throwing money around, shaking hands, making friends? Well, because there's money to be made in war. And now the weapon manufacturers in Japan can sell weapons to any nation they want or any group they want. Well, you know, some of these nations in, in the Middle East who receive money from Abe can say, you know, the Japanese are good, good friends of ours. They, they give us money. Hey, you know, they want to sell us some weapons too. Why don't we just buy those? You see how this works? It's all about a bunch of capitalist structure, of profit and greed, and getting people killed. Well, that doesn't matter to them. That's collateral damage. The big payoff's going to be that fat sack of money we get at the end of the day, huh? Doesn't matter how much you put endless lives at risk. Doesn't matter how many people get murdered. Doesn't matter, you know. We're making money. That's really the heart of this. It's Abe and his capitalist pals putting us all at risk. So, we'll stop talking about how fucked up ISIS is because we all know how fucked up they are. And let's start talking about why all this happened and how Japan got sucked into it in the first place. So I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed a little bit of analysis of this whole situation. If it's the first time you see me, hey man, like the video, share it, and come on now, subscribe. Be a good fella or a good lady. Well, until next time, it's me, John Doe, right here in Tokyo. Check it out.